I she does want people to quit asking her about it because they are dead to her. They have no value. They they offer her nothing of value in her current life situation. This is my intro music. Welcome to the video. I hope you like it lots. So don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbs up button. Now let's react. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of an anthropologist watches Emberlyn read. She posted this at like three hours ago, give or take. Today is April the 4th, 2024. Kind of fun to say. So it's kind of four, four, half four. Anyway, this is Amber's newest one. How I feel about my ex's monthly weight update and huge Trader Joe's haul. I guess we've gone from daily to weekly to monthly as far as the weight updates. I don't really care. Uh... I don't like this shirt that she's wearing. But I do kind of like the shirt that she's wearing. Gosh darn it. It speaks to my inner goth, but clearly we are not gothing today. It is not, it is not goth season. It is sparkly pixie season, which I'm also not doing. Anyway, I said in the last video that Amber's videos are, to put it generously, monotonous. And it's causing my reactions specifically to be not fun. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like they're fun. Other people may enjoy them and that's fine and I appreciate it, but I feel like there could be more done. So we have talked a little about the concept of dark, uh, sorry, dark anthropology and the, the use of basically culture, material culture, visual culture to be as a way of manipulating the audience. All right. We see this a lot. I personally would say we see this a lot with like influencers who do things like record things out of order and then cut them to be in order and then claim that everything happened on the same day. Amber has done that kind of stuff before. Or more specifically, Amber is kind of like the opposite where she records a whole bunch of stuff all in one day and then cuts it up and claims that it's separate days. And there's just little telltale signs here and there that that's not what's going on. Um, sort of people catch on to that very quickly with Amber. So it's things like that in the Amberverse that I kind of want to focus on a little bit more. I want to sort of focus on Amber's consumerism, not consumption consumerism uh, especially here because we're going to trader joe's we're going to have a haul we're also going to talk about her um it's her well i guess it's a manipulation tactic remember we a couple episodes ago i did a 48 laws of power from robert green which i found out is banned from prisons why do you ban books from prison why do you ban books? Let people read. It's fine. Uh, anyway, even if you don't like the book, there are several books I can think of that I would never touch in a million years, but other people are allowed to read these books. Anyway. Being, so anyway, going back to the 48 Laws of Power, Robert Greene, uh, we did talk about ways that Amber uses various types of manipulation, either consciously or subconsciously. I think it's a mix of both. I don't think she's constantly evaluating every thing that comes out of her mouth everything that she shows or everything that she does unlike someone like anna from glitter and lasers who i do believe is 90 percent of the time consciously thinking of everything that they put on the internet which is fine i i honestly think that's the better way to do it <laughs> hear me out amber kind of stumbles along sometimes she's trolling as we would like to call it but when she's doing that she's being very conscious of what she's doing and what she's saying because she's trying to get a reaction out of people i recently did a quirky love rose rosie react where she said she didn't want to have the same community that amber has where she has to rage bait the audience to get activity in the comment section and I'm like, yes, that's that's what happens here. We we see the manipulation, we see the rage baiting, we see the trolling, we see the setting things up kind of a kind of thing that she does. This monthly weigh-in update again, like I said, we've gone from 
daily weigh-ins in January to weekly weigh-ins through February and some of March to, I guess, some we've got monthly weigh-ins now, which means we will end up in a period where we will have no weigh-ins for a while. And then, you guys, this isn't a weight loss channel. And then we'll get back onto phase one again where we're we're cleaning up our eating and we're calorie counting or we're joining Weight Watchers again for the umpteenth million time. And it's also part, that's why I say not everything is conscious for Amber because her cycle that is people are very aware of is manipulative, but I don't think she's consciously trying to be manipulative kind of a thing. Um, other things that she uses to manipulate comes down to her hair her makeup her clothing her lack of angles when she shoots it's not just the words that she says or her body language in general it's the things that she puts around herself as well the way that she presents herself to the internet so long story long ramble short these are the things i want to start looking at more so even though i will probably still make little comments about the actual content here and there i want to start stopping more frequently to talk about the content itself if that makes sense and looking at amber not as a person i don't i'm not trying to dehumanize her in any in the literal s definition of the word i want to look at amber as a product because the amber that we see that we get this video of this is a product of real life amber creating a persona to put on the internet this is internet amber all right so this is the end product of irl amber putting together videos and putting this face forward onto the internet if that makes sense and also this recording may get interrupted i have other things to do today but my partner is currently in a meeting a business meeting and uh, when he gets done we're gonna leave to go do some stuff so this might be a two-parter you won't know that I will cut it in a way that you won't know. You'll just, I might change outfit. I might dye my hair. No, I'm kidding. Hey guys, welcome Hi. to a new vlog. I know I have not been uploading lately. My bad. I'll do better. It's just like. Well, let's get started right off the top here. Part of Amber's cycle, or one of Amber's cycles, I guess. It's not necessarily part of the dieting cycle. It's just part of, it's just one of Amber's cycles is that she does this. She'll drop off the planet i don't really think she has much this time though like she just posted a little bit ago not too long ago she posted about a week ago this seems to be her current spacing is a week six to seven days in between her videos but every time she does this she comes back and she's like i know i've been gone a while i'll do better that's just her kind of like way of acknowledging that she knows that we know that she's been gone for a while and it's her way of basically saying, I did it on purpose kind of a thing, you know. And a lot of people like to point out when she does this kind of crap, oh, it must be nice to be able to just take a week off from your job and not have any repercussions from it. And that never really sinks in with her, I don't think. I don't think that that criticism ever really gets through to her because as much as she says sometimes, that YouTube is her job, I don't think she really believes that. She knows YouTube makes her money. So she sees YouTube as money, but I don't think she perceives it as a job. And the reason I say that is because most people, when they work at a job, especially a job that's creative, that they enjoy, like she's constantly claiming that she does, they put effort into it they find ways to perk up the content they find ways to improve their editing skills they find ways to make the video more interesting i mean yeah everybody's first few videos or you know first year of videos probably are not the same as videos 10 years later which we don't see here if anything the only thing that's improved about amber's videos over the past 10 years is the camera quality that that's pretty much it because i think she also records 90 percent of this on her phone so all right so i just wanted to stop and talk about the the mia copa moments that she has this being one of them the whole like i know i've been gone i know you've all noticed that i've been gone um 
and whatever. I don't actually care. <laughs> so it's like in the past, especially when I've done like daily vlogging or daily uploading, I would just say and film any little thing, but I just like don't do that now. But y'all mm -hmm. all have been asking for more content, so I need to figure out like how am I going to make more content for y'all because y'all want it. So start getting up in the morning or getting up in the morning. Show us your morning routine. Show us you making your coffee and your breakfast. Show us your outfit of the day. Show us what you're going to have for lunch. Take us someplace, even if it's just for a walk with Twinkie. Show us you playing with your pets. Show us you doing some kind of hobby thing. You've got several of them, apparently. Do a clean with me moment. You know, um, what else can you do? Show us your dinner. You've been doing these cook with me videos. That's cool. That's cool. Keep going. I'm not going to tell you not to cook. I would like to see you follow a recipe. That would be amazing. I would like to see you expand your cooking skills. Again, I'm here for a learning journey. Uh, let's see. That's gotten us until the evening. Show us your evening routine. Talk to us about topics that are burning a hole in your brain. Um, and then you don't need to show us you going to bed, but you could at least sign off in a polite way that you're going to bed. Let's see. That's... That was 15 scenes that you could record every day in sequence and you would guarantee to have at least a 10, 15 minute video. If you spent a minute on each one of those scenes, you would have a 15 minute video and that would be your entire day. And it wouldn't take that much effort. Just saying. That's why you should have a script for these things. Oh, I want to give it to you guys. Anyways, uh -huh. I'm actually about to do my hair and do my makeup. Okay, hi. I am ready and I just filmed a See? This is this is perfectly acceptable. Perfectly acceptable. A couple TikToks. I'm trying to do like daily Q&As on Instagram as well just to like correspond more with my audience and plus you guys always to correspond more with your audience, you could actually interact with the comment section of your videos that you put out as opposed to putting up a curated Q&A on your Instagram every day. But again, that is some interaction, I suppose. The fact that she's told us here that she's going to go do her hair and her makeup and she starts the video telling us how she wants to give us more content. But then the next scene that we see is her hair and makeup being done, which is nice. But she tells us that in the meantime, she also shot a couple TikToks. So it was more important to her to produce some TikToks than it was for her to get on camera and produce content for the videos that she claims she doesn't know what to make content for. But you know what content to make for TikTok? So clearly you do know how to produce content. You're just choosing not to, which is another aspect that I think she does where she punishes the audience. It's a cattail. And she punishes the audience by denying us the thing that she thinks we want. We may not actually want any of those things I just lectured, I just rattled off at the beginning. But if she perceives that we do, like she perceives that we want more meaningful content from her, but she's not going to do it. She'd rather spend her time making TikToks than she would making content for YouTube, the thing that actually makes her money. This is why I say she does not actually perceive YouTube as being her job. Do I taste good? Do I taste like sunscreen? Yeah, I know. Probably doesn't taste that hot, does it? I was getting a bath. Because I am dirty by cat standards. I always have so many questions and I don't mind answering them. By the way, I took my nails off. Really? God, I wish you wouldn't do that. Just the idea of her popping those acrylics off of her actual hand just makes my whole hand just clench. Just, oh, God. Because one fell off. And that is the first time that's happened since I got them, started getting them done months ago. Acrylics fall off? Really? My press-ons do that. Actually, they don't anymore. I've learned the secret. But it just, like, came off. And my brain said, I'm not fixing to have nine nails and one missing. So I just took them all off. I'm not sure what I'm getting them done again, but I think I have an idea of what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm debating between two colors. Okay, I don't wear acrylics. Never have. Those of you that do, let me know down in the contents. Contents? Comments section. Does it hurt? 
to pop them off like that? Because I, I imagine that it does, because in my head, it seems like they just kind of glue it on to your, like the whole thing is just glued to your finger. And I know when I used to glue my press-ons on and they would come off, that that would hurt. The little stickers that I use don't do that, but it's just in my head, the acrylics coming off feel like that's going to hurt a lot. Also, I know that they like sand your nail down before they put that on there. So I, I also feel like, won't it tear your nail, your, your natural nail? Won't it tear that off as well? Like, you can tell this bothers me. But I've never had them, so I don't know. I could be completely wrong. They may just pop off like nothing and you don't even notice. So let me know. I can't decide. Went to Trader Joe's, so I'm going to do a haul when I get home. Okay, guys, so I just got home. I went to Trader Joe's. She is really into these stupid glitter things on her eyebrows. Gemstones on her eyebrows. Gemstones. All right, let's talk about that, actually. We know that she's picked this up off of TikTok. We know this is kind of like a, is it even, what is it? Millennials? Gen Z? Yeah, right? Yeah, because Gen X was considered X. Millennials were Y. Gen Z comes after millennials. And there's younger and, el there's elder and younger millennials. You can do this. So yeah, it's Alpha that comes after z right gen alpha so this is a gen z slash gen alpha thing that she's picked up off of tiktok um though i did hear recently that the demographics on tiktok is actually leaning heavier towards millennials than it is gen z and gen alpha that those people are kind of going somewhere else and i don't know where but i want to know so she's picking this this thing up off of tiktok she's picking up a younger generation's fashion thing off of TikTok. I'm surprised she hasn't started putting gems on her teeth yet. I'm looking forward to that. And, but yet that's the only like truly youthful thing she does. She doesn't really update her wardrobe. She kind of looks, I don't know if she's actually trying to rock what she thinks is grandma chic, but she's doing it badly. Y that kind of a thing. She's kind of like a hodgepodge of half, half assery when it comes to various trends like she's all about doing her cat eye which she's done forever and now she's introduced these little gemstones that she wears as if her brow were pierced and we know she likes piercings so that's fine but like she doesn't update her makeup colors i have no room to talk today she doesn't update her outfit colors she doesn't update her jewelry like she doesn't stay on any of those trends it's just the facial trends and it's really just like the dumb shit. You know, she did the fairy hair for a half second and she's doing these gemstones now. Honest to God, the only time I've seen anybody do that stuff is in K-pop videos, but I don't think she follows K-pop. So that's my only experience with it. And it wouldn't take a lot to convince me that Gen Z and Gen Alpha are like really into the fairy hair and the gemstones on the face thing, you know? So, but it's just strange to me that as juvenile as she is and as obsessed with being perceived as young, youthful, and hip as she is, she doesn't update anything else. Like I said, she doesn't update her, her hairstyle. She doesn't update her jewelry. She doesn't update her clothing styles. Like, I'm not saying that you need to do those things. I'm just saying for Amber, it's strange that she's so fixated on certain trends and then not others. So we definitely have some hauling to do. So this is like a grocery haul moment. It's actually the first time that I have been in Trader Joe's here in Oklahoma and I loved it. It was in like the cutest little spot. Genuinely, it was giving such good vibes. So I would love for her to go to Aldi. Has she ever shopped at Aldi? I would love for her to go to Aldi and just be like, oh my God, you guys, everything in here is kind of like a Trader Joe's thing. I know. It's almost as if they're the same company. <gasps> Sorry. Let's start with the first bag. Yay. I just got some eggs because I like to have eggs in the morning. How much did you pay for those eggs? And before anyone says anything, yes, this is processed food. Every single time I do a Trader Joe's haul, people always say that. And I'm just like, yeah. Um. I mean, to be fair, eggs aren't processed. So, I mean, she's at least got that going for her. 
I don't go there often, but when I do, it's like I, I stock up on like the things that I really like from there. It doesn't I mean, I've recently been inside of Trader Joe's and they have fruits and vegetables and salad and non-processed food. I didn't get back into the meat and cheese section, but I'm assuming they have unprocessed raw meat there and you can buy milk and obviously you can get eggs. I don't shop at Trader Joe's very frequently just because I don't think about it. I go to Aldi. So I know, I know they probably do have those things because Trader Joe's is basically Aldi. So if Aldi's got it, Trader Joe's probably does too. It doesn't even matter. I'm counting calories, losing weight, and that's all that matters. So I got these snacky clusters. It's sea salt, potato chips, corn chip dippers, mini pretzel nuggets mixed in milk chocolate. So... Well, that's going to be great for your calorie counting. Excited to try that. I got some of these sour cream and onion flavored rings, lentil and rice snacks. Just because they're made out of lentils does not mean they're good for you. I got some olives. This is stuffed olives. It's garlic and jalapeno. I need... That does sound good, actually some soy sauce so i hope i like the soy sauce because they didn't have like my favorite brand of soy sauce which is totally fine which is what i mean it's probably kikkoman but i'm just curious of course trader joe's doesn't carry kikkoman they don't do they even carry brands i'm pretty sure trader joe's is a lot like aldi where they don't carry brands they carry their own stuff but they don't carry like regular brands in the store and then I really wanted like a pasta sauce, which they didn't have what I normally have because Trader Joe's doesn't have stuff like that. But there's Okay, so that, that answered my question there. There's a pasta sauce that I have been having, but I decided I'm gonna try something different. This is a spicy pasta sauce. So excited to try that. All right, on to the second bag. I got some of their mashed potatoes, which I love. I got two things. Is that frozen mashed potatoes? I mean, I don't care. I just like, it was a very large bag of vegetable panning curry with jasmine rice i also love these i love literally everything that i got honestly um i've never had this which i'm sure i will love it cheese filled fiocchetti with pink sauce i know that i'm pronouncing that wrong so okay look i don't know how to pronounce that either so come for me come for me i already know what's happening um i also got some brussels sprouts shredded i like shredded brussels sprouts i'm not gonna lie i like brussels sprouts but i really like them shredded in a salad Otherwise, I like them roasted. I got two things of the spicy jalapeno chicken sausage. I got a bag of the chicken gyoza popsicles. Love. I gyoza, but yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Chef's kiss. Got a thing of some chana masala. I've never had this. I have had it from like uh, Indian restaurants, but I've never tried it from there, so I'm excited to try it. I got some peppered salami. Salami can be triggering for me, but I'm, I'm hoping I have it under control, and if I don't, I know to just never buy these again. So I'm not sure how to interpret this one. So you don't have the impulse control to not buy the thing that you know triggers you. So your logic was to buy it, and if it triggers you afterwards, you won't buy it again. But you already know that it is a trigger, so why did you buy it in the first place? And if you don't have the ability to control yourself to not buy it, why do you think you're going to have the control to not basically binge on it when you get it home. So, yeah. And then I also got some ground turkey. All right. I prefer ground chicken. I don't like ground. I will cook with it. My partner likes it. But I would, if you've never had ground chicken, because I know some people haven't, it's, it's a lot better. It just tastes better, I guess is what I should say. I prefer the taste and the texture of ground chicken more than I like ground turkey. There we go. So the final bag here, I got some of these rice cracker medleys. You mean final? There's a whole ass bag back there. It's a mix of baked rice crackers flavored with soy sauce, salt and vinegar, and chili with spicy green peas. I personally love stuff like this, so yum. And then I got some of these mochi rice nuggets. And Why have you got so much garbage? And these are spicy. I'm excited to try those. I just got some broccoli here, some pulled pork tamales. I like making these in the air fryer. It's just mini chicken tacos. I got some Thai vegetable gyoza. If you guys remember, then you know. Is it gyoza or is it gyoza? Because I might be the one wrong here. Did that make sense? I got two of these mac and cheeses. Which Speaking of being wrong, OMG. I got schooled on the weighing thing. Apparently I am the idiot. So there, I apologize. My partner explained it to me. I still think it's stupid. <laughs>
I get that I'm wrong, but I still think it's stupid. <laughs> For some reason, this is a hill that I have chosen to crawl up. But, as was explained to me, uh, for some reason, measuring things that way is the better way to do it. Does not make sense in my head, but apparently I'm special, so there you have it. Which I really like. And then I got some of these salami sticks. I got Thumb? three packs of them, which is six of them. Um, this is what it looks like. I was like, okay, I want to try those. I got some of these turkey meatballs. If you guys know, then you know. I went through a phase where I was obsessed with those as well. And then last- A phase? Implying that you are not currently in that? thing I got are these buffalo style chicken poppers. So now I have to put everything away. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, guys. So real quickly, I'm going to do a monthly update. On Let's talk about the food haul. Um, I think one of the reasons why Amber likes to shop at Trader Joe's is because she perceives Trader Joe's as being like higher end. A lot of people do. And a lot of people also perceive Trader Joe's as being healthy because I'm not entirely sure why. I, I really don't know why people think that buying things from Trader Joe's defaults it to being healthier, but that does seem to be a perception. Um, but this also falls back into the whole like Amber doesn't buy off brand. And I realize that we can argue that Trader Joe's not having traditional brands only carrying their own brand would technically be off brand, would be store brand. But again, a lot of people perceive Trader Joe's as being like this higher end, wholesome, whole foods alternative. I don't get it, but there you have it. So I think when she's so giddy to do this, because like you notice that she bought some stuff that was actually food, but the majority of that stuff was like snack crackers, potato chips dipped in chocolate, spicy mochi bites like don't get me wrong these all of these things sound interesting but those aren't meals and how is she calorie counting and how is she weighing her food i guess maybe she'll show us it's early in the video yet i doubt it though and we know her history with snack stuff so and then of course she pulls out the salami tells us that it's a trigger food and if it triggers her, she's not going to buy it again. But you've already purchased it knowing it's a trigger food. So why do you have it in the first place? And then all of the air fryer stuff that she's got. Like, we know she makes those in multiple servings. Which, to be fair, a serving of most of those things is probably like two of them. Which would not be satisfying to anyone. But they're also not meant to be meal items. I think pretty much all of those things, with the exception of like the meatballs... Those are all like hors d'oeuvres or like like uh, small plates to be shared kind of a thing. You're not really supposed to sit there and eat the entire container yourself. I'm not going to judge you if you do because I'm not going to claim that I haven't done that. But the whole point is that they're not meant to be a meal kind of a thing. It's an interesting presentation of something that is typically perceived as being better than regular groceries and her justification of all of the processed foods that she has in there i was expecting like foods processed food like the sausages or the meatballs or the pasta like that's all processed but at least it's like meal ingredients i honestly did not expect her to have just bags upon bags upon bags of various snacks I don't know why, but to argue that, yeah, I know these are all processed foods. You know, you can come for me if you want. It's not even that they're processed foods. It's that it's literal junk food. You know, just because those onion rings are made out of lentils does not mean that they're healthy for you. They're just made out of lentils as opposed to whatever they usually make them out of. You know, it's that kind of a thing. So... That's another problem I think she has with her food is she doesn't know the difference between processed food and junk food or super, super overly processed food would be junk food. She doesn't get the difference. She thinks they're the same. And it's another one of these things with her. I truly do believe that she thinks if she buys it from Trader Joe's, it's somehow better than just buying a bag of Lay's potato chips. Kind of a thing. It's just... But I've noticed a lot of people think that way about the Trader Joe's brand in general, not realizing that it's basically Aldi. 
which I don't know how you feel about Aldi. I think they're awesome. But there are some people that are like, Aldi? But they'll shop at Trader Joe's. The same thing. Kind of a thing. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so she's getting ready to give us her monthly update here. Let's take a real a pause. Hey, hi, hello there. We are back. And my, my chair is shrunk. But I have a cat. Hey, hello. think you can hear her brain i could but all right uh we're getting our we're getting ready to have the weight update i believe okay guys so real quickly i want to do a monthly update on how much weight i lost in march because i did it in january where i lost seven pounds i did it in february where i lost 9.2 pounds and now march how much did i lose so i actually weighed in today at 489.6 so that means in the month of march i lost exactly 10 pounds which i'm very very proud of and i i mean it's good that she's losing m more weight by fractions every month but no you may not walk on the keyboard you still may not walk on the keyboard thank you but i mean you know here's the thing everybody's like oh she could be losing more weight and yeah i guess she could be but look at it this way let's pretend she's losing the weight this is more sustainable for her this really really slow way of losing weight and since she's counting major weight loss as point whatever on the scale it keeps her happy and if she's happy and motivated she's going to continue to do it kind of a thing notice i'm losing more and more weight each month so it'd be cool if in april i lose 10.2 kind of my point here not 11 pounds, not 12 pounds, not 15 pounds, 10.2. That's not even an extra pound. It's easy to point to that and be like, look, she's not really trying to lose weight. Because if she was really trying to lose weight, she'd pick a, a whole number, like 11. Lose 11 pounds. You know? But I guess for Amber, this is losing weight. I don't know. Even if it's these teeny, teeny, tiny little amounts, let's just run with it or more than that. So that could be like a cute little challenge. Let's hope that I even remember that I said that, but I'm just very proud of my- We won't. I saw a flag. I'm doing the damn thing. I'm I get the feeling no one ever told Amber they were proud of her when she was growing up. And she's never worked in a job job. Not really. And so she's never worked someplace where she's actually been rewarded for merit. You know, she didn't go, she didn't complete college. So she doesn't have that kind of ego boost like just going off of the past 10 years what we've seen and just going off the stories that she's told I don't think Amber's ever had a win like an actual win except for getting the silver button I think that's the closest thing to like a win that Amber's ever had and so everything else she has to make up for you know like I'm proud of myself for losing minuscule amounts of weight no one else is saying it to her so she's got to say it to herself you know i'm not stressing like too hard about it and i think with the lack of like stressing about it because normally like if i'm counting calories i want to be like perfect and i want to eat the right things when has this happened because i can think of several times that you've counted calories and that was not what happened so realistically like it's not gonna happen like you guys saw my haul today as long as i stay below my calories right now that is all that i'm focused on and i know eventually down the road i'm gonna have to start eating healthier and switching things up that way but right now what i'm doing is working for me and i'm just really happy about it does that look like someone who's happy does that look like somebody who's happy about it them dead eyes let's just I wish I could hold my hand up so that I could actually just cut the eyes off for you guys so you could just stare at the eyes or just stare at the mouth. Do, do it to yourselves. You just hold your finger up and cover up her eyes and her nose and just look at her mouth. Does that look like somebody who's happy and proud? And then do the same thing with the mouth and the nose. Are those the eyes of someone who's happy and proud? Even You can even do it asymmetrically that's not the face that's not the half of a face of somebody who's happy and proud neither is that one 
Okay. This just kind of backs up the whole, like, I think she has to tell herself that she's proud and she has to psych herself up because she doesn't live with anybody right now. So there's nobody to play cheerleader for her. Valentine may or may not be real. There, there is that strong possibility. I'm sure her mom says nice things to her because her mom seems to be wanting to, like, fix things and, and at least have some kind of positive relationship with her. But I don't, I think in her past, I don't think anybody ever told her they were proud of her. So she's, she's got to do it for herself. And since she's never actually achieved anything that is like a life stage kind of a thing, like she didn't even graduate from high school. And I'm not knocking people who graduated with a GED. It's just, she didn't get that that marker of progress you know i don't know if they have graduations for people with geds i graduated from high school so i don't know i mean do they do they at least give you some kind of graduation ceremony so that there's like some kind of end point like a lot of people write off their graduations they're just like ah it's just stupid it's not really it's it's one of the few rites of passage that we america and a lot of the westernized world that we even still have as like markers of progression through life and not having any of them like ever like i remember i had a graduation from preschool into kindergarten and then there was another one from kindergarten into first grade i went to a montessori school and then you know i went to my high school graduation and I went to my undergrad graduation. I did not go to my graduate level because uh, I took some graduate level classes and I got a certificate. I didn't go to that graduation because it was just a certificate, you know, and I didn't complete my master's. So I didn't have to worry about that one. And I, I don't know if I would have gone to that one anyway, because I would have had to have traveled all the way out to Colorado and that just wasn't going to happen. But, you know, those those time markers were there for me if I wanted to participate in them. Amber didn't even have the option. That progression of steps. We don't have much of that once we graduate, once you get out of college. You don't really have a whole lot of those unless it's something like, you know, the marker of a promotion kind of a thing or retirement even. These are all progression markers. Amber's never had anything like that. It just, it seems like to me. She's gotten close to it, but she's never had anything like that. And so she's never had a group of people who have said, wow, you did the thing. Look at you. You completed something. Good job. She's never had that. Like I said, the closest thing I think for her would be that silver button because that is an achievement. And, you know, there's only so many people out there who have them. There's several. But the point is, is there's not a bunch, you know? I think that's why she's constantly proud of herself for all these teeny tiny little steps and all of this bullshit that there's no reason to be proud of. It's because no one's ever been proud of her. Okay, guys, so I did take off my shirt. Don't mind that. So I opened I won't. These, I was about to try them and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to do it for the vlog because what the heck is this for real, for real? Um... I mean, it's a vlog. What are we talking about? Mochi rice nuggets. I don't know. They look like that. They're supposed to be crispy, crunchy, and spicy. So let's try it. So they're air popped mochi. Okay. All right. Compare this face. I'm doing my... Her, her, eyes, her eyes are still dead, but at least her smile looks somewhat genuine. Compare that to what she said to us in the closet. She's getting ready to eat food. Oh, I just looked um, in the camera. And a lot of people have been asking me lately how long it took me to actually get this in the mail. And I think they're asking me because they're trying to catch Chantel in a lie, Beauty Beauty, because she also received hers. So Chantel has a silver button. Y'all just gonna have to live with that. <laughs> yes, it says everyday Miriam on it, but to answer that question i'll just post uh when i opened it so here it is hey you guys so a lot of people have been asking me i've already watched this part which is why i knew it was coming but the question was people were asking her how long did it take her to get the button 
And to answer the question, she's just playing the clip of when she received it. That's not answering the question. People either want to know legitimately how long it took the damn button to be mailed to her, or they are asking her how long in the chronology of her of her chapter, yes, of her channel did it take for her to reach what is it, a hundred thousand? Yeah, hundred K. Now this is back in Eric and Ricky's place. So this is early Becky era. 80% sure about this one. Yeah, that's right. There are people who know exactly what video this is and when it was posted and all of that good stuff. And I mean, we can tell, obviously it's in the past. There's no link to it. There's no way to follow anything other than the visual cues of this clip. And if you're not somebody who is engrossed in the Amberverse and Amber lore, you don't know when this is happening. So she's not answering the question. She's just taking this as an opportunity to show off the silver button. It's why the silver button's in damn near every shot that she takes. She makes sure that she gets that silver button in every video at least once. There's only, a, since she's moved, I've noticed. There's only been a handful of videos that she's posted where there hasn't been at least one background passage of the button. Now it is in a very high traffic area for her, which is smart. She films over in that area a lot because she likes the backdrop and that's fine because that backdrop allows her to show off the things that she values most, her weird ass perfume bottles, the picture of her and her mom, some of her Legos. I forget what else is over there right now because she does rotate things, but she always has that button over there. I think it's moved shelves once, which is fine. That's usually what the background of a vlogger does. I have dirty dishes and an Easter basket. Make of that what you would like. Clearly, I don't think about what's in the background of my videos. Amber does, or did, in this, or does now. She did not in the past. Amber's using this as an opportunity to show us how successful she is as a YouTuber. I think in her head she is answering the question because I don't think she, again, I don't, I don't know if she didn't understand the question or if she's purposefully not understanding the question. Either way... This does allow her to do a little bit of bragging about her button all the time. Sort of throwing shade, but not really. Because she got her button so much earlier than Foodie Beauty did. So I don't know if this is slight shade. It might be. But at the same time, she's kind of protecting Chantel by not giving a definitive answer that people can just use her words to go after foodie beauty with because apparently there's a lot of people that don't believe the button is real i mean i'm sure you can get fake ones Ooh, can i that'd be kind of fun but anyway i'm sure you can get a fake one somewhere so there's that but didn't she get hers like roughly exactly around the same time that mr snowflake got his because he did like a he did his own unboxing kind of prove that it was that she really did get the button whether she bought the button or not with you know bought the subscriptions for it or not as a whole other story but it's a real button anyway ah uh, where are we going with this back to the we are gonna watch i was thinking that maybe of skipping this clip but actually we are gonna watch this because there's some interesting things that happen in this clip about this and i finally got it i'm kind of like i don't know i'm really shocked i never imagined that I would ever reach this point. I don't know who's holding the camera, but it's moving while they're breathing and it's driving me nuts. But I did. So I want to show you guys what I just got. Oh my gosh. Ah! Okay. It's from YouTube. Woo Is that See this? That's what I'm talking about. Like she's giddy about getting this letter, which I would imagine anybody would be. This is a big accomplishment in the world of YouTube. Okay. I'm not trying to take away from this for anybody, especially if you're somebody who has one of these and it, it was a big highlight for you. It should be. But that's kind of my point. It's the only highlight she's had. Nobody handed her a diploma. I, I, don't, I don't know how you get your GED. I really hope they do do some kind of like graduation ceremony for everybody because I don't know, but I kind of feel like they just kind of like, congratulations, you graduated. 
I don't know if that's how that works. Uh, let me know. She's never even gotten a driver's license. Like, yeah, when I got, not, this is just like a family thing, but when I got my driver's license, my family was like, woo, you can drive now. Now go to the store. I think that's literally what my dad did. I think he gave me a grocery list and told me to go to the store. Yes. And it was stupid. And I did it because I could. But that's kind of the thing. She's never had that. You know? As you've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. Each and every person who has subscribed to your channel has been touched by what you created. They were inspired, challenged, or entertained. You guys, <laughs> I'm so entertaining. We inspired and touched is not why we're here. Know that you don't do this for rewards. You do it because you have a drive to create and share and because you found an audience who cares. This is an important part here. I know she's faking this whole thing because she's like, ooh, feels, but I think Amber believes this. Amber believes that somewhere in her audience there are, she has a group of raving fans who are just excited and are eating up every word that she says because they're, they want to be her kind of a thing. And that's kind of why I wanted to watch this unboxing. Like, yes, she's faking this face and yes, she's faking the pout, but the the sentiment behind it is real she really does think that people are watching her because they're touched by what she does or they're inspired by her and this button proves it maybe they are she's got a shit ton of, of subscribers so something's she's doing something right um god only knows what it is for recently though <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Oh my God. I literally am shook it. I forgot she used to say that. Sorry, I'm in awe. Presented to Amberlynn Reed for passing 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember the day that I hit it, so many people were like, are you going to get the... I don't know if I want to take it out, to be honest. That is literally written on here. But yeah, a lot of people were like, are you going to get the um, silver thingy majigger? And I was just like, probably not, because you have to like request it. And I just... I didn't think I deserved it, but then I was like, wait a minute, 100,000 subscribers is a lot. So I requested it and it came within like a week. So, wow. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, I know that my YouTube journey has been quite insane, as we all know, but I still have so many people who support me and message me and say kind things to me and like are there for me. And I appreciate that. And I literally would not still be doing YouTube videos if it wasn't for you guys. So I Mm. there's some truthfulness here but like she's doing some really long blinks here this whole time so i think there are people who are supporting her and who do send her nice things but i don't think she's really thinking about them when she's saying this i think she's thinking about everyone else and i think that's where the slow blinking is coming from is because she's like Yes, those people do exist, but they're not the people she's thinking of when she says these things. I just want to say thank you. So yeah, that was years ago. I remember getting this and I was so happy. Like, it was just emotional. I just thank you guys so much. And now I have like 220K. Like, what are you guys doing? You guys are amazing. Okay, well, let's try these though. I'm a little nervous. Imagine the worst thing that you have to worry about in a day is if you're going to like a snack or not. That's like, I make fun of my cats all the time because sometimes they don't get fed exactly on the dot and they get, they do the cat thing. They're like, I'm dying. And they get anxious and stuff because the, the food that they're expecting isn't right there. They have a full bowl of food at all times, by the way. They're grazers. They're, I'm talking about the wet food. But I make fun of my cats because I'm like, oh, you poor things. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to you in your entire life. Imagine if the, less, the most stressful thing that you've ever had to think about, at least in the last five years, is if you like a snack or not. They smell like seasoning, like a spicy seasoning. They're crispy and crunchy. Your rice crackers. What do you want? It's puffed rice. Well, it's mochi, but it's still rice. So, so far, that's correct. I don't think I like it. I do like the texture. So 
just took a bite of something and chewed it and watched myself do it, it's not going to be in the video. Because I wanted to see what I look like when I'm chewing with my back teeth. She's still chewing real high up in her mouth. Like, she's still chewing along these teeth here. So there's something up with her back molars. Or, you know, it is entirely possible she just never learned how to chew correctly. Some people are like that. Some people just never figured out how to chew food. You know? But she's, you can see with her mouth, she's got, she's got it all up front. Yeah, so you're like, if I put my tongue, if I lightly chew upon my tongue. Mm-hmm. That's my tongue right here. No, and I put it back here. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. I love crunchy. So I feel like for some people, this would be spicy. There's a spice to it, but it just doesn't taste that great. So that was kind of a flop. They did have ones that weren't spicy. So I feel like next time I go to Trader Joe's, I'm going to try those. You guys the food segments are entertaining for her because she gets to watch herself eat, which we've already established she enjoys doing. I don't think she's necessarily like this one. I, I think she saw these. She does like spicy things. So I imagine that she did buy those herself um, for herself. Her necklace is on backwards. I don't know why I've even noticed it, but it is. It's just these segments, these eating segments, they are pure entertainment for her. But at the same time, she's imagining that she's giving people, adv again, advice. She's giving people her connoisseur opinion on the said snacks. And I guess if I needed an opinion on snacks, I guess Amber would be someone I might look to because I don't eat a lot of snacks. I would see those in the grocery store and be like, huh, cool, and just keep going. But this this does feed into that idea that she... that not idea. This does feed into that persona that she likes to project or pretend like she's projecting or pretend that her audience likes to see of her giving advice. She, you know, I like this food. You like me. You should listen to what I have to say about this food. But it's still that influencer thing, that, that thing that she really wants to be and that image that she really wants to project. Guys, I have had an absolute influx of people contacting me about my exes. One has a new girlfriend, one is married. People are assuming I am single, which I get it. People are also assuming I'm jealous and bitter. Literally, no, I want both of them to be happy. I want them to move on from me and the relationships that we've had and they definitely have. And I've also done the same thing. I am keeping things from you guys. She does want them to move on. Um, I do have a love life though. I very much do. I have talked about Valentine a little bit. I just want to do things a little bit differently this time. You know, not just like, not entirely sure valentine's a real person i'm really not i think alexis was sorry if i said everybody's things off i think she was a real person and there was something going on there and maybe that is valentine but i haven't been keeping up on the off video drama going on so i don't know if they're even talking still but yeah, it's, I'm not 100% that Valentine is a real person, but I've been wrong in the past. So I was expecting a redemption arc between her and wifey and that didn't happen. So, um, as far as like the exes moving on thing, she, she sounds sincere. Bombard you guys right off the bat. Like, hi, you know, I have a new love interest. Like I have talked about her and it was before my ex got a girlfriend. It was before my ex got married because I'm over there on Instagram. Like, yeah, I do have, you know, a little love life going. And yes, I am actively in love right now. And the reason why I'm not talking about that in my videos and like bombarding you guys with that is because I do want to do things differently because so much in the past, I've just like word vomited. She can be taught. All my relationship stuff. And like with Feline, I very much learned how to be more like, private and i'm not saying that this relationship is gonna stay private it's just very much i want to just like give you guys a little bit at a time i think she enjoyed leading us on with feline i think she enjoyed having that piece of power over her audience i know who my my person is you don't know i i and i do think that she really does believe that she somehow kept all that information about feline from us even though she was the one that kind of word vomited it everywhere. 
So I think she did enjoy that little cat and mouse game that she thought she was playing with the audience where she was just kind of teasing us with Feline and like we never figured it out. Clearly. So I think she's enjoying this aspect of this new relationship as well, assuming there's even an actual relationship. I think she's enjoying stringing us along, letting us have little nuggets of information when she wants us to have it. And I think that's her plan here. She's planning on just kind of like feeding us little things here and there. So tee Valentine, tee And I think that's what we're going to get. Again, assuming that Valentine is not the other girl whose name I'm not going to say because my unit will go off. My dot unit. But, you know, my... I'm fence sitting. It, Valentine is either the girl we've already talked about or I don't think Valentine's real. I can be wrong though. I can be very wrong. But how many times has she talked about several different girls now that she has had communications with, exchanged Instagram stories or Instagram DMs with, you know, there was the girl whose friend saw her at the tattoo parlor. Is that where she was? The piercing place? You know, that was weird. There was somebody else there for a while. She's been trying to convince us that Alexis isn't the same person that she had been talking to. And same thing with Valentine. She's trying to convince us that Valentine isn't the other girl. There's too much. There's too many balls in the air right now. And Amber's really not that great at juggling it. So I'm sure somewhere someone's already figured this shit out. But that's the thing. Somewhere someone's already figured this shit out because Amber's just not good at this. But in her head, she is. And I think she gets a kick out of stringing us along and just giving us little tidbits here and there and, you know, always having this mysterious lover in the background. My girlfriend from Canada, you wouldn't know her anyway. You know, she goes to a different school. You wouldn't know it anyway kind of a thing. Because I'm still figuring out my stuff. Like, this is still new for me. Just know that I'm very happy. And I'm also happy for my exes. I'm not some, like, jealous, bitter, crazy ex. Like, that's literally not who I am. Okay, this is literally who you've told us you are. <laughs> the entire time you've been breaking up with Feline. Yes, you are. You've done nothing but tell us and demonstrate to us that this is the exact person you are while you've been breaking up with Feline. Why wouldn't your audience believe that that's the same kind of person you are to your other exes? I know a lot of people like to assume that they know me and who I am and how I feel and how I react to things, but like, y'all aren't right. And I don't mean that like in a negative way, but yeah, like... You, you mean it in a positive way? Like, we're all thriving in our own way. And I think that like, y'all, I've moved on. I just, I want you guys to do the same. We are all our own separate individuals living our own separate lives. And I just really truly think it's time. Just let me be me. And I no longer want to be like Destiny's ex or Becky's ex. Like I'm just not wanting that. Like I am at such a different space in my life, different era. Just who I am as a person is just so different. I feel like I've lived multiple lifetimes, especially here on YouTube. Like go look, I just, I have transformed constantly. and someone's not watching mr snowflake's documentary on them and i just feel like i'm at my most like independent happy true self and i'm enjoying learning more about myself like there are things that i definitely need to improve on though like don't get me wrong like i really need to see a therapist for my borderline personality disorder like she just can't not bring that up going back to this persona that amber insists on projecting like she Again, remember, there's real-life Amber, who we don't really know. We, we can't say that we know real-life Amber, but we can know online Amber. And online Amber is a product of real-life Amber. So online Amber, internet Amber is who IRL Amber wants the world to see. It could be this is her peak self. This could be her, her ideal higher self. It could be this is the character that IRL Amber thinks will do best in the internet space, you know, kind of things. I'm not saying that there are traits of IRL, there, there are not traits of IRL Amber in internet Amber, but the reality is this is what we get to see. We don't know this one over here. All right. So this whole, we were talking about this on the live 
going over foodie beauty actually uh last night wednesday amber always spins the story always reinvents herself always reinvents her past her history in a way that makes her the victim and she's the victim so that she can remove agency so that she doesn't have to look at things and go oh i did that or my actions caused that or i took a bad situation and made it even worse kind of a thing this reinventing of internet amber having bpd this is a new thing that she's started doing since she moved to oklahoma there's literally no one who believes she's been formally diagnosed with this that i'm aware of there are people that say that she does have traits of it but we are the internet we are not her doctors <laughs> we are not her therapists she's never been formally diagnosed with this as far as i am aware it's just something she's picked up off of TikTok, and she's running with it because it gives her an excuse to behave badly and it removes agency from her she she is not the one who effectively cyber stalked her ex for months after she moved to oklahoma amber's not the one that did that that was her bb her bpd so she's not responsible for her behavior and she's said as much in recent times even the whole like um i i have triggers and my my girlfriends need to not push my triggers and that kind of things like she always removes this is her victim and victim mentality is she removes agency from herself and therefore whatever she's blaming whatever she's a, a victim of with right now this bpd that is responsible for her actions not her she is not responsible for the things that she does because she has a convenient excuse for it so that's what this is and she has to continuously remind us of her various ailments so that when she has to pull out that particular pokemon card we remember that she had it in the first place kind of a thing like if she just whipped out some new diagnosis which she has done and just started going to town with that one the audience would not go along with it as well not that we're going along with this very well but because it just comes out of nowhere we're less likely to accept it she's been harping on about bpd since she moved to oklahoma so we're used to it at this point and so when she brings it up we have varying reactions to it but the reality is is she's brought it up enough times that most of us are going most of her audience is going to be like oh yeah you've got bpd i forgot kind of a thing you know the, the reactors we're a little bit more critical about this kind of stuff we seem to have a little bit longer memory people who are i would call them amber archivists same kind of situation they're looking at her with a much more critical eye their whole goal is to document her existence online kind of a thing her average viewer might not remember these things they there is probably a good chunk of her viewers that weren't following her before the oklahoma move or only started following her in the wifey era i mean the french the french brigade for example anyway I, this is me not ranting about the bpd thing while ranting about the bpd thing i've made enough videos where i've basically called her on her bullshit so like i'm not gonna lie to you guys i thought i was better in that regard like it's not something that like you can just like heal from instantly no it takes years and years and years of like therapy but i thought that i saw improvement in myself and like a situation happened recently where i'm just like whoa girly pop needs to go to therapy and that's something i can definitely like admit out loud is like i need help and i personally have never gone to therapy for a borderline personality disorder i recently went to therapy and i had like over 22 visits with the same psychologist 12 you had 12 where is this 22 coming from first off i don't believe you had any and secondly what the fuck happened <laughs> how did we go from 12 to twice that almost who i loved he helped me tremendously but I wasn't seeing her for borderline personality disorder. Was it a he or a her? You used both pronouns in the same sentence. Like as a whole. 
And now I need to find a therapist who specializes in that. Also, the story was after she got done seeing that therapist, that therapist had recommended her to a specialist. And that's the specialist that supposedly told her she has the BPD. And then she moved. And I am a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so I'm totally just rambling right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, you guys, I have my own life over here. Not sharing everything. One day I will. But like, I just want to take things slow and just do things different. But just know that I am happy. And I'm also happy for my exes. Like, I am capable of feeling that way. As much as some people don't believe it. But I do want to end this video. I hope that you guys did enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey, guys. No, I did not. Anyway, sorry. In summary, this video has just reinforced things that I have said in the past about Amber's self persona of this whole like influencer advisor person that she wishes she was. It also backs up this idea that I've pushed, I've, I've had a few times. It also backs up an idea that I've mentioned a few times where Amber likes to buy things that she thinks are bougie. And that's the whole Trader Joe's thing. Um, the trying of the snacks, again, I don't think this time it had anything to do with an outside influence, shall we say. But it's the same kind of concept. She knows that there's an aspect of her audience that likes to watch her eat. And she enjoys watching herself eat. She's still chewing with her front teeth. I assume she's always going to chew with her front teeth because she can't chew with her back teeth. But there's that. Um, so these are all things that, you know, things we've talked about in the past and that we've continued to talk about. The whole thing with her exes, again, um, I, she does want people to quit asking her about it because they are dead to her. They have no value. They, they offer her nothing of value in her current life situation. And so they don't exist. And so when people bring them up, it upsets her or it irritates her because she's not thinking about them. As if they never happened, if that makes sense, kind of a thing. And so being reminded that they did irritates her. She enjoys playing this game and she's that she started doing with wifey this whole oh so secret mysterious you guys i'm not going to tell you everything tee -hee 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 -hee, you know and then drops little nuggets along the way because she thinks she's outsmarting her audience and she's not i'm willing to bet people already know who this person is and where they live and how much education they've ever had and when they had lost their first tooth so if that's not an indicator to you that i don't want to know any of those things you're not paying attention. This whole, I'm doing better, I've lived all these lives, um, and the whole victimization, victimization storyline as far as her new darling mental diagnosis that she's been harping on since she moved to Oklahoma. These are all ways of her, first off, establishing her backstory as a victim. Secondly, removing agency for any of her behavior, because again, it's not her fault, it's the BPD's fault. And thirdly, showing us that she can overcome these things. She is a strong, independent woman who is capable of rising above these things that she has been unfortunately burdened with. Kind of a thing it's like when she pretends like she's addicted to something and she's done this a few times now and then two weeks later she's miraculously recovered from it because she was never addicted to it in the first place but she establishes this story that she is for the purpose of later on coming out and being like oh but i overcame it i'm so strong kind of a thing all right and then we're all supposed to clap if any of that were true, she would be losing more weight. She would be overcoming her actual issues of binge eating disorder and just in general, bad nutrition. She would be more physical. She would be getting out there and doing everything she could to lose weight and get healthy. As opposed to telling us, 
I just want to stay below a certain number of calories. And in the meantime, I'm going to eat all of these garbage snacks that I picked up from Trader Joe's. All right. She has no real interest in changing. She brings up the fact that she's changed so much over the past year, over the past 10 years. All you have to do is go watch Mr. Snowflake's documentary on her, which is a 15 part documentary. It's even longer than that because some of those parts are broken up into part one, part two. She has not changed in 10 years. The only thing that has changed is who she's dating and where she lives. Her overall attitude about things has not changed. Her overall effort has not changed. Her victimization mentality has not changed. She still does not take responsibility for things. She still does not apologize for things. She'll make a lukewarm apology and that's about it. I will say she does learn because one thing that she doesn't seem to do is make the same major mistake over and over again. That doesn't mean that she thinks she was wrong. She just knows that her audience reacted very badly and she doesn't want that to happen again. That's different than believing you were wrong. I think we've, I think I've done all the damage I can do here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm trying to make these a little bit more interesting other than just sitting here being like, oh my God. Uh, so if you have made it this far in the video, go ahead and put a, I was going to say put a succulent, a succulent, go and put a succulent in the comment section or just any green plants, I suppose, because I've been staring at that stupid thing this entire time. I've been blabbing on here. Uh, so there's your emoji, uh, a succulent or a cactus or any other kind of green plant is acceptable and yeah thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel thank you to my subscribers thank you to my members uh thank you to everyone who's going to the thumbs up ding ding and yeah i will see everybody in the next one bye this is my outro music you can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing this is my outro music thank you for watching See you next time.